When Final Fantasy XV came out, there was a lot that people could and did complain about. Pacing issues, weird jumps between open world and linear, the fact that this was gone, or this was gone, and how you needed to watch this, or watch this to even understand it. But if there is one thing that nearly everyone actually appreciates, it's the ending. Though the path we took to get there wasn't always the smoothest, 15's ending is perfect. Leading an entire video game and expanded media's worth of character development and build up to a moment that was fated to happen from before the game even began. It pays off Noctis' growth from an apathetic prince to a king ready to not only accept his fate but to sacrifice his life for the world he spent the entire game exploring. It's a beautiful, tragic ending that serves to bring the entire narrative perfectly in, and it's one of the few elements of 15 that nearly all agree is great. So it's no surprise that Square Enix's latest addition to the never-ending development of 15 focuses on adding to this part of the game. The World Pack expands on 15's final chapter with an expanded Insomnia Ruins dungeon, a bunch of new boss fights, and more surprisingly new cutscenes. There's also the ability to drive the boat freely and the new version of the Armitage mode, that are there too I guess. So how is the new endgame content, and more importantly is it worth a considerably higher price tag than the previous DLCs? And the answer is sort of, but not really. More so than any of the previous DLCs, the Royal Pack really shows the growing pains that 15 suffered at launch, and in the end I don't really know if I feel satisfied or disappointed. Disclaimer before I begin, this won't be a review of the Royal Edition as a whole, that I've played through the entire base game and previous DLCs, this is mostly a review of the Royal Pack content, and how it fares from the perspective of existing fans. If you haven't played the game already, and have the chance, buy the Royal Edition with the DLC. 15 is a great game. Spoilers for all of Final Fantasy 15. So what the Royal Pack basically comes down to is about 3-4 hours of extended content in the game's final dungeon Insomnia. What's in those 3-4 hours are some pretty poor side quests, some pretty great new boss fights, and a surprising amount of new cutscenes. First off, the new expanded Insomnia map is great. While I would have perhaps liked to see more life and unique characters populating it, if stuff like this was roaming on the streets I doubt I'd be running around either. It's about 4 times the size of the original version, and it's still as visually stunning as it was the first time. Insomnia was one of the most underused areas of the original game, right next to the big city of Gralia, which was a shame given how unique it was as an actual contemporary style city, so it's great that we actually get a decent ride around it this time. What would have been great is if Tabata's team included some more well building here. The handful of statues of former Lucius Kings we find are great, but there's only three of them. This game is absolutely begging for some Fallout style data logs. I want to know more about the Lucian Kings. I want to find out the political tensions built up between Lucius and the Empire of Niflheim. Hell, I want to know more about working a 9 to 5 in the Crown City. Come on, Square, just give me some backstory. You need one guy to write this stuff. Rather than going straight for Arden's ass to stand around, Noctis and crew meet up with the Kings Live. You know, those guys that the game forgot about until they started appearing in story events that have already happened. Here we get to meet up with Corleonis and the rest of the Kings Live. The addition of Kor here is an appreciated one, he's one of the more famously underused characters in the game, and it makes sense that he'd be here to fight with the group till the last. Though it does become apparent that after reintroducing him, they run out of things to actually do with him pretty quickly. Yeah, just walk it off buddy, you'll be fine. We also get a chance to pick up some side quests at the Glaive's base, and this is the part of the expansion I'm a little less hot about. These side quests are lame. Despite the fact that there are only four, they're the same bottom of the barrel fetch quests that we were doing in Hammerhead. I mean, I'm about to go and fulfill my lifelong destiny of sacrificing myself to save the world, but sure I'll go and take a couple of photos of the ruins. So the side quests are lame, but what about the new boss fights? There are about five new boss fights here, four added into the actual ending, and one optional. First, the optional. Yeah, I hate this boss. After my first couple of attempts at trying to beat Omega, I looked through a video tutorial and saw that every single one of them was about an hour long and nerfed the fuck out of there. Making a boss take a long time isn't fun. I didn't enjoy it when you made me do it for my Platinum Trophy Square, and I'm not about to do it again. The other four are luckily a lot better. Cerberus' attack pattern knocking you down and making it hard to get hits in is kinda lame, but still it's Cerberus, and it adds a lot more gravity of actually trying to get into the Citadel. The Ifrit fight is basically the same, but when we actually get to the Citadel, we get the real stuff. Rather than taking a leisurely stroll up to the top this time, each floor sees us fighting the Kings of Yore. These boss fights are what I wanted more 15 encounters to be, which is basically Kingdom Hearts. They're the right amount of challenge, they have clear tells, and actually require you to use the dodge mechanic, like an actual action game rather than an RPG. And each one is built to require the use of one of the bros. This made the fact that the original game didn't have character switching from the start all the more painful because taking advantage of each character's unique attributes in each fight was great. And they had so much to the game's final push, making Nox's party feel necessary for his ascent. 
So yeah, I dig these fights, even if they're only about 5 minutes each. Okay, now we get to the part of the DLC I find it a little hard to put my feelings on. As well as extending the game's final area and adding in new bosses, the Royal Pack also weirdly retcons a bunch of new scenes into the game's final showdown. As well as the already mentioned Kingsglaive editions, there's a new scene in which Luna summons all the gods to help Nox and the gang, which is cool but doesn't really add anything. A couple of smaller scenes in which each of the Choker Bros show their dedication to Nox, a small amount of lore dump at the end, and that's about it for the most part. Well, as I mentioned at the start, 15's ending is pretty much perfect and I didn't want it to change. I still wanted more. More lore, more history, or character cameos. And here is where I found the big problem with the Royal Pack as a whole. It's not for existing fans. Nothing in the pack is substantial enough to change my opinion of all the scenes, and because I have already played the game, they can't help but feel a little haphazardly put together. That's why I think Square should have made this a free update for existing players, because it's just not worth it which makes its pricing at over twice that of the excellent previous DLC is just odd. While I'm not one of those people who feels like Square Enix owe me anything, as far as I'm concerned I put 70 hours into 15, and I feel like I got my money's worth out of each of the DLCs, maybe not comrades. But £11 just feels odd for content that doesn't really add anything worthwhile for existing players. That being said, would this content be good for new players who haven't already experienced it? Yeah. This edition makes the game's end far superior and actually feels like a Final Fantasy ending, with multiple bosses, sacrifices, and a real fight to the end, but its effect is sorta of lost if this is your second time through, and that sucks. While I'm not someone who feels scorned by Square, and I'm still looking forward to the new Season 2 DLCs, this is the first time I feel like I've been nickeled and dined by them. So yeah, that's the Royal Pack. In addition to the end game, I kinda wish I could experience the ending for the first time for. And probably should have been free. But hey, there's always episode adding, right? Thanks for watching. This video was just a quick little thought I wanted to put out there after playing the Royal Pack. I was planning on putting out a different video this week on the original in the air, but I decided I wanted to fully replay the game first before I made it and get some more fresh takes on how I feel about it. I put out game analysis, review, and opinion videos every week, so if you dig this, maybe consider subscribing, and I'll see you next week.